Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about a really important topic that I have been mentioning for probably three years now. Um, I keep saying I'm going to make a video, and for whatever reason, I never get around to it. And I think that's because I think things are like divine timing really matters. Um, and I think that I needed to process a lot of this first. And then once I put it into the book and I kind of had my my true understanding of more of the elements of the Artemis group, which I'm still putting together. Um, I couldn't do a video about about this beautiful group because I it wouldn't have been whole and as complete as as necessary for me to kind of do a video just about the Artemis group. Now I've talked about the Artemis group in videos, in 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 interviews. And I have said little things here and there, tidbits, but I, I haven't really dedicated an entire um, video or interview just to this group. But I think that it, it merits um, uh, its own kind of focus because of the fact of who they are, why they're here, their significance, but also the challenge and how they are so misunderstood, much like the labeled groups of children. Um, and there are so many parents out there that I believe have these, these children and they don't know what to do with them. And they are struggling to parent them um, for good reason. And I wanna talk about that uh, today, uh, finally, um, because I think that it's time. And I think that enough of the, maybe perhaps I was waiting for a lot of the uh, parents of the Artemis group to wake up enough or to be ready to receive this information or their children to grow up to a certain point so that they could recognize that they're part of this group as well. Because maybe a couple of years ago they were just born and they wouldn't have, have even thought second had a second thought about it. So there's a lot of reasons. Um, I think that I have waited this long, um, but I think now's the time at least to, to, to begin the conversation so that I think those that are drawn to watch this video um, are either in the group themselves. And I didn't even think that there would be adults um, in this group uh, until I figured out that somebody I know was in it. I had an epiphany uh, a couple years ago. I'm not gonna say who it is because they don't know. Um, I just figured it out. And I don't think that they're in a place in their life where they can, that they even need to hear this. It's not even relevant for, for them, but I think it, it was it was for me to to figure it out so that I could realize, oh, <clears throat> I could realize that there are um, ambassadors of the Artemis group that have come in and that are adults now so that I, that I could get that message uh, that they're that they that they're everywhere. Um, and and if you listen to this and you're, you know, 20s, 30s and maybe even 40, well, 40s too, um, we don't ever want to cap anything because I think we always we can always realize or have hindsight that uh, it's not so rigid. You know, it doesn't have to be this cutoff date. So, you know, maybe even in the fifties. Um, and 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 if you relate to what I'm saying today, then you likely are in the group. And if your if your daughter is very similar to how I'm explaining today, then likely she's in this group as well. So you don't have to panic and try to make an appointment with me to get confirmation. That's never my intention. Um, it's really, you have to, to go with your gut and, and your knowing, and you're just either gonna say, yep, that's right, that's it, or uh, or not. Um, and and you, I, I think you can use your own discernment and to figure it out for, your, for yourself. Um, so the Artemis group, uh, where do I even, <laughs> where do I even begin? So I learned about the Artemis group and I talk about the Artemis group in my new book, The Star Seeds and the Great Awakening in the beginning, part one of the book where I go into star seeds and or star seed origins and disconnecting from labels. And then the last thing I talk about um, as after high frequency children and, and more of an explanation of star seeds is uh, the Artemis group. There are other groups uh, out there. Um, there are the, there's the Halo group. Um, there's so many others, but I, I didn't think that it was necessary to go into all of them in this particular book, um, even though it is called Star Seeds and the Great Awakening. But it really wasn't about the different types of star seeds. It's, this is really about um, bringing to the surface of where awareness, the 3D interference, and all the things that are they're being done to block the star seeds. Um, so perhaps I'll do something later on on the different groups of star seeds, but I don't. We want to get away from labels anyway, so it's not really relevant on um, what group you're in. Um, it's just recognizing your uniqueness, your superpowers, uh, your wisdom, 
your innate abilities and tapping into them and standing in your power so that the 3D interference doesn't work and we can bring in more light to the planet. We can evolve um, in density and in consciousness. So it's the labels are really not that important. But this one merited a label because I was I was given one, which is the Artemis group. So the Artemis group are enlightened beings that are very ascended. They are most of them have even been evolved past uh um uh bodies past uh physical the physicality they don't necessarily have an attachment or an origin to a specific place or planet or star system because they are everywhere and nowhere at the same time they're just all over the galaxies all over the multiverse so not one of them have i really received like a home base planet um although i've seen them everywhere in sirius i've seen them in, in the andromeda i've seen andromeda i've seen in the in pleiades um arcturus uh even in multi in the multiverse in another alternate universe where i don't even they they just said that they were they're kind of with source so um these are ancient ancient beings and they and they are referred to as the artemis group not because each one of them is the reincarnation of artemis what it is is that they are a fractal of that energy um in combination with their own soul so they they are their own unique consciousness their own unique soul that has gone down the evolutionary path and kind of have gravitated to this particular energetic frequency and they are in service of humanity um, at large and it shouldn't even use humanity at um, at the collective consciousness at large because they themselves individually have evolved past all of this all, all of the stuff especially that we're seeing here in the 3d and they are they go to different um planets that are in need of an evolution um and some assistance not to rescue them, but to come in and be of influence positively to shift the trajectory. And so they uh, they are volunteering to descend into this particular matrix um, and to be of service to humanity. Uh, there is a male counterpart group, but I'm not going to talk about that group today. But the specifics with the Artemis is they embody the, their own consciousness, but a fractal of the energy uh, essence and frequency of um, Ar Artemis. So they are warrior spirits. They are um, anything that you open up the book about, read about um, Artemis, the goddess Artemis. It, it, it's it, that it, that is a big part of their journey. Um, they are the protectors of of children of of even just men. Man, man, I guess we shouldn't use the word man. Um, mankind or humankind in general. Um, they are the keepers of the moon. And we know that that can have various meanings to it, protecting us from the negative aspects of the moon. But there are many moons all over the universe. So they control stars. Um, they are part, they are an essence of star themselves. There's so much we can dive into in this video, um, but I want to get into the characteristics, but just know that they come from all over the galaxies. They are some, many of them are beyond physicality. They are such brave warrior spirits, uh, but they are coming in to, um, to embody the divine feminine. So they are specifically uh, born and, and come into this uh, world in this incarnation as a female. Now they actually are a good balance of masculine, divine masculine and the divine feminine energies, but they choose to come in as, as a female in this particular incarnation, in this ascension timeline, um, in this now timeline, this dominant timeline of the ascension in order to bring in those warrior divine feminine aspects to the collective that have been suppressed for many, many, many cycles. Um, so it, they're, they would physically need to be female because of the hormones and the creative energy and the possibilities that the um, female body and biology brings into this collective kind of dynamic, but also the divine feminine energy um, from all of their lifetimes, all of the wisdom that they've collected from millions and millions of years, however many lifetimes, how many many lives that is for them specifically, um, because many of, the, many of them could have lived for thousands of years in one 
um, body in one location in one planet in one incarnation. So all of the energy that they have learned um, over time, all that wisdom that they've collected, all of that work that they've done. Imagine somebody with, you know, five master PhDs, like the highest level you can get times like 10 different subjects. They come in and they go into like a kindergarten classroom with all of that wisdom and knowledge. And they, um, that makes it really challenging. So they come in and they have no, they know way more than everyone else around them. Um, and they're, and they're struggling a little bit. So I'll get there in a second, but let's just go back for circle back for a second. So they're female. They are coming in still. So there is no starting point. I mean, they're being born every day. I think a good percentage of them are the age of five to about 15 right now. Um, and then I, I believe, because I've seen that there are ambassadors that are actually in their 20s, 30s, and like I said, probably 40s as well. I think the older ones that are in their 30s or 40s, and maybe even the 20s, don't realize um, that they, the power that they have, but they will resonate with probably what I'm going to say today about their personality, that they have thought all of their life that they were too much. You know, they were labeled, oh, you're, you're too much, too much. You know, you, you are a lot for people to take your, your, your energy is just too much for people to handle. Um, and you are, you kind of like that one in the group that stands out and, you know, you're, it'll make sense to you that you're likely in this group and you'll understand why, because there aren't that many of them. I believe, you know, it's in the thousands. Um, when I first heard about this group, I thought it was like, less than 20 of them. And then they kept coming in um, into my reality through sessions. So that's how I learned about um, them. I first learned about them, first learned about them for my daughter uh, because I was struggling so much to parent her. She is beyond chat. Like I don't, there's no word to describe what, what, uh, what I experienced parenting um, this beautiful soul. And I was at my wits end, pulling my hair out, like literally crying and surrendering to the universe. Please like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Like I figured out the first two. I've helped hundreds of other kids and their parents work through challenges, but I kept hitting wall after wall after wall and nothing that I did worked with her. And then I would get frustrated. Um, and I, I, then it would just turn and I would become just out of sorts and I couldn't think properly. So I had to have that you know, dark night of the soul moment where I literally was on my knees, like, please, somebody help me because nobody understands what I'm going through. And and then I was getting, I was being judged by other people. Like, can't you control her? Uh, even by my own family, I won't specifically say names or, or it doesn't even matter, but they were judging me. Like, you know, well, what, what's going on? Like, get your shit together. Um, why, why can't you, what, what's, what's wrong with her? Um, and they weren't, and they were misunderstanding her. And then now she's being labeled with behavioral issues and, and she's disrespectful and needs a spanking and I don't hit my children. So, um, that wasn't going to be an option for me either. Cause I knew that I just, it was a puzzle I needed to figure out. And I was I was missing pieces. It's like you, you know, you get, uh, you go buy a puzzle and it's missing half the pieces and you're putting it together and you're so frustrated because you can't see what the picture is. You can kind of tell, but without those pieces, you can't complete it. And without those pieces, I couldn't parent properly. Um, and instead of getting mad at her about it and, and physically hurting her to shut her up, um, I refused. And I said, no, no, I'm missing something. Like there's, there's more to it. Like I'm, I'm, if I'm misunderstanding her, sorry, so is everyone else. So uh, I had that, you know, moment where I just completely surrendered and I said, okay, I'm going to stop inserting my thoughts and my judgment. And I'm going to just listen to the universe and, and, and I'm, I'm wait for an answer. I'm not going to go into the long story of it, but it is in my book. I explain it in detail, but I did get a, a message to, uh, to Artemis, to the goddess Artemis basically came to me and um, I ended up researching, uh, you know, more about Greek mythology and it, so many things made sense. Um, it really put things together um, with my family in general and who my middle son is and my husband and, and Aramis um, and why I was the out, I was the outcast in this family because I have completely different energy, like night and day energy. But I think I come in and ground and, and humble the group because I'm with a bunch of warrior spirits. 
Um, and I like to think I'm a warrior, uh, but more of a, the gentle kind, um, more of the healer, the mother energy, like wanting to help everybody give love and calm everything down. And the warrior will come out when needed. And it, and I believe me, I've seen that warrior um, in the first half of my life come out, but it was destructive and I didn't have it under control. So the key to being a warrior spirit is being able to control that fierce, that fire within you. And I think that's the biggest challenge with the Artemis group is these girls, these females come in and embody a human um, vessel, which, you know, some of them have done many, many times and others, um, because some of these children take, um, some of these souls take on an assignment to be able to be in this life. So they've had maybe 10, 15, 20 lifetimes of being a human to prepare, prepare them for this particular timeline because they needed to acclimate to being a body in a body. And there's so many elements to it. I it's, it's so overwhelming to explain. So I'm really trying to get the most important points, but just know that they, they, they're, they, they know what's going on. They are human lie detectors. They are so connected in a way that they're powerhouses um, and they can't be manipulated or lied to. Uh, they're just, they know everything. Uh, but the, the challenge is that they are so high in density um, that they come in and the physical body, it just, it's challenging to be a child. So I talk about when I researched the Artemis, um, the goddess Artemis and kind of her warrior energy and her protective and, and the connection to animals that she has, connection to, to children that she has and all these elements. I'm um, like, oh my God, that's, that's Aramis. That's her. And there's no accident that her name is Aramis because what I was told is that we're, we're taking on a new generation of the Artemis energy, but we're changing it. We're shifting it to the modern day, modern times and softening it a little bit. So the name Aramis has such big significance because it's like the sun, we're bringing in the sun, we're bringing in the light, the alpha and the omega, the essence of God, Christ consciousness, all of this, um, these way showers are coming in and they are, we're, we're shifting the name. So Aramis does not only represent my daughter, but that is why we have chosen the name Aramis Creative Learning Center for our learning centers for the future, because it's 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 not just about learning. And this is this is a a legacy that we're creating for just the future trajectory of of children um, and the Aramis group that we're creating or the nonprofit that I've called the Aramis Collective is much like the Artemis Collective, but we're changing the name because we're changing the tone because it's, it's a blending of energy of all of this willpower, collective consciousness and knowing um, and this wisdom of each individual soul that's coming through and along with the Artemis. So it's evolved. It's an, it's an evolution of the Artemis into what we need right now as a collective in order to transmute and evolve um, as a collective. And this is the role that they're playing within that this transition period. So they're very important. Um, so hopefully this makes sense so far. Now, they have chosen, many of them have chosen to come in to Indigo Parents, which would be my age, you know, 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, um, predominantly. But again, there are in indigos that are much older, indigos that are still younger in their 20s. But nevertheless, they come in to spiritually open and aware parents to some degree. To some degree, they may not, we may not have always been awake, but, but our plan is to be awake when they are here, either right before or they are the catalyst to the awakening and then everything shifts for their parents or at least one of the parents. Importantly, the mom, because the, the mom energy, the divine feminine of the mom and has to integrate with, with the Artemis um, soul for quite some time before they can birth this these beautiful beings um, because it's such a there's such high frequency. So the challenge is, I'll talk about the challenge first, and then I'll talk about the characteristics. The challenge that these souls have is they are be evolved beyond our recognition, of, 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 beyond our understanding. So they come in um, as a child and, you know, they have, they come in as a baby and they have to go through 
the, you know, the primal stages of being a human. And that is very challenging. And I've been told that it's one of the most challenging um, of, of all of the, the species in our dense, in our, in, in our galaxy with regard to kind of the lower density fields because we are so evolved consciously, but we are inserted into these bodies that are um, limited in density. And there's a conflict from the beginning and 3D interference enhances that conflict and keeps it going. Um, and if we can break out of it, then it's it's so easy once we see past the illusion to break free of that conflict and and our soul and our body can integrate in a beautiful way. And that's where we have the people that are kind of like, you know, the way showers right now who are leading the pack and, and always have been, or at some point do um, with, with leading the collective in like, Hey, you don't, you know, don't look there, look over here and, and encourage people to, to find their inner knowing again, follow their intuition. So they're, they're the leaders all over the world in, um, in the good ones in the political arena and the medical arena and the healing arena and the education everywhere. They're all over the place. They play their role um, and they have been. So the Artemis group um, come into families uh, that are the most conducive to their kind of their role because they need to be with patient parents. So it's not likely, I would say it's very rare that a um, an Artemis soul is going to come into an Artemis mom that is going to be too powerful too much energy and it it, it would be just it would just be too destructive I think because it's just two powerhouses two alpha and omega energies at this in the same space is is, is uh and, and feminine is like a poof an explosion waiting to happen so what I've seen is that a majority of them are indigo moms let's talk about the moms who birthed them first um, that are are generally more humbled and here to balance and to be kind of an anchor for them so that they have an easier time in this kind of early stages or their initiation, um, the first few, uh, first decade of being here so that they can acclimate and, and the moms can help them um, figure things out. Uh, and when they when they feel like they're about to fly off the handles, instead of having parents that are going to react and beat them and, you know, physically harm them and shame them and, you know, parent them like previous generations would have done that. Like, Oh, I'll break her spirit. You know, I'll, I'll beat that out of her. Uh, they choose parents that are, have convictions like myself that would never do that because they, we've got a, we had a plan from the beginning where the right soul chose to be the parent of that, a child in order to let them be who they are, let them, and, and we figure it out together. Now, this isn't hundred percent across the board. I'm sure that someone out there um, that's probably older like me had a, um, that's an, it, that feels that you're part of this group had a mom that was abusive or an addict or, or, or whatever, or just wasn't very um, patient. You know, we come in with a plan sometimes and then life happens, 3D interference happens. And when we don't always, are, we're not always able to follow uh, the lead, you know, that we plan to. So it, things don't always work out to to plan, um, but it is what it is. So, but a majority of of the of the families that I've seen, the family dynamics that I've seen, is that the Artemis is uh, group. The the soul comes into a family that is able to navigate these challenging waters. At least one of the parents is. You know, it could be the dad and the mom struggles, but the dad is more patient. So the father's out there. If you're watching this, you could be the anchor for that for that child. You bring in the energy that balances her um, throughout their early, especially during their early years where it's the hardest. They struggle the most when they're young. So they are the leaders, the future leaders, the way showers and the pioneers of the future. So the crystals opened our hearts back in the day. Um, 15 to 25 years ago, they were the, that wave of energy that came in and just was their whole purpose was to spread love and light on the planet. You know, they're, 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 they're non-confrontational. They're the peacekeepers like my son, who's 18. Who, that's what he did for me. That's what he does to, for everyone around him. He's just, God, he's just such a pleasure. Just, just such a beautiful being um, that just reminds us, you know, to just chill, you know, everything's going to be fine. Um, and just to remain calm and, and, and just let, you know, be nice to each other. 
And um, and then we have the the groups that came in. Again, crystals can be much older and much younger. There, remember, there are ambassadors on either end that come in way before and then way later. So there are crystals still being born. Then we have the stars and the rainbows that come in and they are the movers and the shakers and they break things down and they break the walls and then they, the stars build them back up. Then they have their engineering minds and their their intellect and their out of the box thinking, you know, that they're often labeled as the Asperger group um, that are just so smart and, and they're, the, they're the rebuilders, you know, they're, they truly are uh, the architects of the new world. And then the rainbows are the, the dreamers, the imagination, they have that imagination, that vivid imagination to work together with the stars to, um, to have this, these, to co-create. It, it's such a beautiful network of energy uh, so that, now the younger group, and they had to come first because they got to lay the groundwork and the foundation. And the the Artemis group is just one of many groups. Okay, so it's the, this, they're not the only leaders of the future. Right? They're just one very strong, um, very prominent group, though, of the divine feminine leaders of the future that are going to, that right now are seemingly, um, you know, fiery, strong-willed. They don't listen. They don't, no does not work for them. Uh, you know, reason reasoning doesn't even work. It's like their way or no way at all. And the reason they're like this is because they're so more so much more advanced. They know why things aren't working in the 3D. So as a parent, I'm saying no, but their their intellect and their wisdom comes through so strong. They're thinking about how it's not how what we're doing isn't working here on such a grand scale in such a multi-dimensional way. That to me, it doesn't make sense, but to them, they're trying to break us out of these programs, these repetitive patterns that they're not really saying no to that particular thing. They're just saying no in general, like, no, uh, why can't you guys see that what is being done or this way is wrong? Why do we talk this way? Why do we react this way? Why do things have to be done this particular way? And they're saying, no, 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 they, 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 they need us to re- they need us to shift our perspective and really reevaluate why things are the way they are. You know, my mom told me, well, cause my mom said it and my grandmother said it and, you know, generations uh, it's been passed down. This is just how it's done. Okay. So why is it done this way though? Um, is it working? Is it still working? And maybe it worked a hundred years ago, but is it still working now? And if we have to sit with that, I think a majority of us can say, well, gosh, I don't know if it is. Maybe, maybe we do need to. It would be beneficial if we uh, shifted some things around a little bit, did things a little bit differently. That is what they're here to do. They're they're here to, you know, kind of be a thorn in um, our sides to make us break out of our programming and to reevaluate everything everything. I'm not talking about one thing. I'm talking about the way we eat, the way we think, the way we act, the way we react, the way we um, communicate, the way we resolve conflict. There's just so much that they struggle though, because regardless of how evolved you are, this goes for anybody, anybody watching this, doesn't matter where you're from. It, it, regardless of how evolved you are and what density you come from, Ultimately, you still come through the earth portal, the birth portal into a human vessel that is going to be limited by the genetic coding, um, this 3D density, the 3D interference and the limitations and the capacity in which our brain can function based on our age, our experience and our reaction to the world around us. Just like I talk about in my animal webinar, you know, you could be the most gentle soul, but when you come in and you have that, those primal um, needs or reactions that sometimes can't be controlled, that's when we have dogs that bite because they get their, they, their energy is disconcerted in some way. They react from a primal space, even though they would never harm anybody um, from a soul level. They can't control the reaction that their body has. Sometimes those hormones, those responses just take over and it's really challenging for them to, 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 to navigate that. Um, so it's much easier for a soul to come in as a golden retriever who's been bred over time, for example, to be just a gentle dog. But then you have my Doberman who's a little bit nutty 
and he's been bred to be a fierce protector. And uh, it's and now he has a lot of anxiety, regardless of how evolved the soul is. It's he struggles because um, he's got these natural instincts that are coming through these primal instincts that sometimes override the ability to process and think through um, naturally. Um, and so the, the children um, are the same way, regardless of if they're Artemis or any anyone or even adults. So it's the most challenging though, when you are a young child, because we have the just, you know, we are limited in our capacity to articulate what we wanna say based off our, of our words. And many of them don't even want to speak our words because they know that they have spells. So they're hesitant to even speak because they know what happens when they say these certain words. Um, and so they get frustrated. They get frustrated. And when you get frustrated in 3D, you react. Um, you have this survival instinct that comes in. So what do you do? You hit, you throw, you scream, you, you act unruly. Um, and we look at that as, oh my gosh, get that kid under control. What's wrong with that kid? But outside of this density, as an evolved being, you have a moment of frustration. It's an opportunity to reflect and create. So you you charge that energy and you create with it. Uh, so it's the exact opposite. But we have the ability to do that outside of this density because we know um, consciously that we can utilize that energy for good. We could fuel the fire within us and create with it. Here, we don't have the connection because they don't allow us to. So through the 3D interference and all of the programming and all the things, you know. So we there's that synapse doesn't um, doesn't occur between the the innate primal um, reaction and the innate knowing. Um, and sometimes it's it, it's blocked, so one doesn't see the other. So as a child, you don't know what to do with that energy. To, you can't create with it. You just you are desperate for somebody to to explain it what's going on, and you don't know how to process it. So in your when you're into three D interference, third density, third dimensional um, kind of energy, uh, your primal instincts kick in, and you're in the density of fear, frustration maybe even shame, whatever it may be. And you're going to react in what with what is conducive to that vibration, which is destruction, fighting, screaming, crying, all of those things, because that's what feels, it, it comes natural. It's so natural. It's harder to fight against those instincts as a human and raise, rise above it, breathe it out and and use that for something constructive. We, we don't know what to do with that energy. Um, no matter how evolved we are as a child, most struggle. Now we have the exceptions like the crystals. Me, my son never reacted. Whatever I said, didn't matter what it is. No, Jordan. Okay, mommy. Never. It's like, I was like, what is, who is this kid? This is like a little, we called him as our Zen Buddha. So there are those that come in with the skills um, they come in on that frequency where they just, it's, that's their, that's their destiny though. That's their plan. The rest of us come in as, as way showers and pioneers, and we have to experience it because that's our learning. Crystals aren't here to learn that. That's not why they're here, That, but the rainbows, the stars, the indigos, and certainly the Artemis group are. So that's part of the process. We have to learn how to control it so that we can master it. And then as we get older, then we use all of that energy of creation um, and knowing um, those valuable tools that we've learned over time towards what it is that we're here to do. But it's very challenging from birth. They, they don't want to be children. They really struggle with being a child. They have so much energy that comes in, so much fiery energy, this knowing, this conviction, this, this, this you know, I'm right, you're wrong. How do you parent that? It's so challenging. And, um, it, you know, they're just naturally, they're unapologetically being themselves. Um, and we want that. Uh, but we have to remind them sometimes that, hey, you know, I, gosh, you're just a beautiful soul. I'm so grateful that you've come into this reality and you're going to do great things when you, when you grow up. But right now, um, it would be helpful if you just um, 
would uh, would allow me the opportunity to guide you because right now I can teach you a lot and you know and sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't but I will tell you that when they're in the the height of their screaming and kicking that is not the time to try to reason with them that is the time where you say okay and I've noticed that with 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 most Artemis um children they need all they need is somebody to help them find them their their center again they get lost in the energy and it's like they're in this whirl, whirlpool they're spinning they're out of control and all they need is a gentle hand to come out bring them back in say give them a hug or give them and some don't like to be touched so it depends you you have to know your child some of them do really well say give just let me give you some love and then they you feel their steam just settling and they just their breathing slower and they just say thank you you know, like I, I lost myself for a second. So love, validation, they need validation. They need to, they need, they want to be the center of the world. They want everyone to look at them all the time. And if, if you're not, and you're focusing on another child or somebody else, uh, it's like the end of the world for them. They need to be the center of the, of the, the gravitational pull in the home. They need to be right in the center. So they just, they want to feel loved and they want to feel validated. Those are their two main things. If they feel like those two things, they have the confidence to do, they'll have the confidence to do anything later. So it's really hard to navigate right now in the earlier years. But I'm telling you, if we don't break their spirit, they are preparing themselves to be the leaders of the future because what they're gonna do is they will come in and they will be the future of, of, of education, of leadership, um, like the quantum military um, on these high councils that will help um, help humanity maintain fairness and 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 kind of um, these these councils and of 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 uh, kind of like in Lemuria um, and and other places that I've seen um, where we have these councils of elders not by age but of consciousness. So like I've said in the book, they could be anywhere from five years old to you know hundreds and everything in between um i could see them on these councils they are they have the most vivid and vast Im imagination you can eat, like it's like how do you even come up with this stuff so they're creators they'll be um kind of the architects of the new world in all facets of 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 anything you can think of medicine um the political arena whatever that looks like and whatever we choose to call it later and healing, uh, interstellar communication and portal activation and uh, and even engineer engineers and scientists. So they're not all going to be um, artsy type. You know, some of them are, are also very cognitive and analytical and brain smart because they're going to be in the engineering sector or they're going to be in technology um, or maybe in, in you know, uh, space uh, this like space force type of thing, or like, the, like I said, the quantum military, they're going to be everywhere. Um, but their personalities are very similar all around though. They are human lie detectors. They don't take no for an answer. They are very challenging. Um, they, the one, the couple things that are, that, that I find are very cons relatively consistent. One, they lack a little bit of empathy and compassion compared to other star seeds. Not because they're not compassionate, empathic per people, souls. They're just, they're so focused and driven on their point that and, and the significance of their point um, that they oftentimes forget that there are other points to be had or that are valid or, or necessary. Um, and they don't see that they see their point is their way. No one else's way. I want to play this game and I don't care what you want to play because this is what I want to do. Um, you know, if someone gets hurt, they can, they have a compassionate side, but sometimes it's like too overwhelming. And, you know, if someone else is crying, like they may even kind of be taken back by it and, and, and withdrawn. Um, you know, they're, they very, they're very competitive. They don't like to lose. They're like to the extreme. So a lot of them are athletes. 
a lot of them are into sports. That's because they have so much energy. They have to funnel that energy into some sort of activity. Otherwise they'll go crazy. Like they have so much energy channeling through them. There's such high frequency. They have such creative energies that has to be used for something. Otherwise they are, they, they think that this reality is so boring. You'll hear them say, oftentimes I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. You could have done something with them for the past four hours. Um, and then the second you walk in the door and the parents are like, oh, exhausted. I want to lay on the couch. Like what's next? I'm bored. What else can we do? I'm bored because they are multidimensional beings. They're used to having instant manifestation. Anything you want to do, you could do it. That's what they're used to. So when they come here, what do you mean? Like everything takes too long. Um, you know, the hours feel like millennium. Um, you know, why can't they have every toy at the store? What, is, what do you mean you have to buy it? Why can't everybody just have it? I want that one. I want it now. Give it to me. Um, you know, and they're not doing it. That, that's the thing. They're so misunderstood. They're not doing it to be like bratty little kids, though. They are trying to figure out why everyone can't just have every toy at the store. Why is it in a box on a shelf and I have to go through this line and give them something to get it? You know, well, where I come from, I just imagine it and then poof, there it is. And, and everybody has access to it. Why is it this way? What, what's this money about? You know, um, why can't I just eat everything in the fridge? Uh, it tastes really good. And I like the way I feel when I'm eating and, and it makes me feel whole. And, you know, a lot of them overeat because they are trying to fill a void. Um, or they, it's something that makes them feel secure or they're eating their emotions because they don't understand all the emotions. So they can often be overweight. Um, they have to channel their energy. So they're very, so many of them are very active. And like I said, into sports or athletics, um, but when they're in those sports or athletics, they're very competitive and they can be aggressive with other children. Not, not like physically, although I've seen some of them are because they don't know how to hone in on their anger. So they'll hit other people and things like that. But they are, they just, they're so competitive with everyone around them and they can't have fun sometimes because it's all about winning. And if I don't win, then they scream, kick and cry and then they don't want to play anymore. They're like, I don't want to play. It's like, I can't win if I'm not going to win. And then the other kids look at them like, what's, what's the, like, what's wrong with this person? I, and, and so they have a lot of trouble making friends. They're, they're, they're really challenging to parent, but they have, they struggle to find friends because they are a lot. They are, uh, they are an energy in the room that is felt by everybody. It's apparent when they come in the room, you can feel them. When they leave the room, you can feel the energy gone. They shift the energy of everything in their environment. They are, they're like these little electric generators. Um, and I feel for them because they are so misunderstood. They're not trying to be behaviorally um, uh, challenging. Um, they just have strong convictions uh, and and they're misinterpreted. Uh, so I, I feel like I'm jumping around a lot, but there's just so many points that I want to make. And by now, you, as, as, you're, as you're listening to this, if your daughter is like, you're already saying, oh, that that's my daughter, I know it, or I'm that way. Now, remember, there can be um, those that are older that are in this group, but I think on purpose, their soul chose not to be in the arena of the knowing because they are the powerhouses right now. Uh, they're like, they're, they're lawyers, but they like, they're, you know, they're up against all the men. They are, um, you know, the head veterinarians uh, in a, in a man, in a, in a men's man's world. Um, they are in corporate, in corporate world and they're at the top and they are, you know, like they're powerhouses and the men are afraid, can be afraid of them. I mean, they're, they don't, but they don't know that they don't know who they are. I think on purpose because uh, we don't need to derail their minds, their minds at all. Like they, they're, they're on it. They have, they're on a train track and they're going through and nothing's going to stop them. And they don't need to know, you know, not every, okay. Not everybody that's a star seed needs to be spiritual. And this is a, this is a whole other video that I'll, that I have to do. Um, you don't have to be like this spiritual beacon to be a star seed. Some people chose to come in to be just with all the other people um, to, to help them learn and 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 to, but be relatable but not necessarily bring in the spiritual aspect because not everybody is comfortable with it uh because of their program so instead of coming in and and trying to you know um share the the spiritual side with people and make them uncomfortable they knowingly said oh i'll come in and i'll kind of blend in with the masses and 
Um, and I'll just, I'll teach and, and guide in a different way where we don't even need to bring the spiritual element in, but they're just good people. You know, maybe they're Christians, maybe they're uh, Jewish, you know, maybe they chose to be within a certain religion um, so that they could be around those people uh, that they wanted to, to guide and assist. Um, but they're just, they stand out. They're humble, they're kind, um, you know, but they don't have to be spiritual, but they're just awesome people. So that's kind of a side note right there. Um, but the star seeds that are the, the Artemis group that are older, uh, they would probably hear this and resonate with it, um, but they may never know about it. And I know several that I'm like positive that they are, but I'm not going to say anything. And I, one of them is in my, in, in my husband's um, family, uh, in his huge family. I'm like, oh my God, she's definitely one. And so <clears throat> the children though, they are, um, they find it really challenging to navigate their emotions. They find it challenging to navigate their phys their bodies. Um, many of them have a bigger structure, not all, but a good, at least half that I've seen, if not even more than half are big, like not just like overweight, uh, cause not in all of them are, but they have a big body, big bone structure. Like they're like Amazonian women. Um, and that's because they need that they need their body to be bigger to hold and withstand the energy that they bring through. They're big people. They're tall. Maybe they're really tall, but skinny um, and not overweight. Um, they're very powerful. They're just, there's so much power within them that the body, like think about Artemis or think about a Greek God. I mean, there's just so much energy that they need to hold that they need a bigger frame, but then not all of them are like that. So, you know, that's not a hundred percent, not all of them overeat, but they, they do tend to, gravity to something that holds that that can center them so if they're not like my daughter is hates physical activity and um, I think because her body is bigger it's uncomfortable for her to 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 move around and she's not as ad um, what's agile is that the word like you know she can't do a lot of things that the other kids that that can do so she feels like um if I'm not going to master that I'm not even going to bother. So she'll channel her energy someplace else. So there are many that are in sports and are really good at their, at what they do. They're soccer players, they're Olympians, you know, future Olympians and et cetera, et cetera. But then there are those that, nah, I'm not really into that, <clears throat> but they channel that strong energy into something else, which is creation. So a good other portion of them are into art, singing. Um, they, they have a great voice and they are vocal and they sing, or they have some sort of talent where they dance or they are writers or they, you know, um, they, uh, paint or they're really good at certain crafts or they like just anything with creation. They're very social. They, you know, they get along with everybody, but they also don't get along with everybody at the same time. It's like a weird <laughs> kind of thing that they have um, this battle within themselves because they want everyone to like them. Um, but at the same time, they don't care if anyone likes them. They want to be the center of attention. Um, but at the same time, they can't share that center of attention with anyone else. Uh, you, you, they want, they crave a lot of friends, but then a lot of friends, friendships don't last because there are, they're, they're a lot for the other person to navigate and they can be overwhelming um and then they the it turn it, it it turns off the other child where they're just like i don't know what to do with this so they 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 require a patient and unique kind of counterpart a friend so two fiery uh, artemis girls are not likely going to find each other and resonate they would resonate but it would be too it would be a conflict it would be too much energy so they probably i've noticed that any anyone else that's like my daughter uh, they don't, they tend to not like each other. And I think that there's just only room for one rainbow, um, one um, Artemis at, in, in one space. It, it's just too much. So they tend to find somebody that can blend with them. Um, you know, the unfortunate thing uh, that can happen as well is that, you know, they're misunderstood um, at school by teachers and more importantly, other parents uh, and unfortunately, my daughter had an experience recently where she was, uh, we were told that her, this particular um, child's mom wouldn't, doesn't want Aramis to play with her daughter anymore. Come to find out, um, and I'm not going to give any specifics, and I'm not judging this person. I, I think that this poor woman, um, the parent has some deep healing that she, an inner child work that she needs to do. There's a lot of pain there. And I think that 
her being around uh, our family is bringing out a level of healing she's not ready for. Um, and she just resisted. And the sad, the, the unfortunate thing is I, I believe her daughter's in her life. She's not a rain. She's not a, um, she's not an uh, uh, Artemis group, uh, but she's a beautiful divine, absolutely magnificent soul that I think has a lot of crystal energy in her. And I think she came into her parents' life to to help them heal through their through their traumas. And one of them, the one parent, is resisting that. Um, and and the sad thing is, my daughter and this girl got along brilliantly. Like they they were yin and yang for each other. So one brought something out of my daughter that she didn't have, and vice versa. And they were able. Did they have conflict here and there? Sure, but they worked it out, and they actually played better than I've ever seen her play with anyone. And it was so sad because it was really hard for her to find somebody that she resonated with, and that got her and understood her and allowed her to be who she wanted, who she is. And she did the same for that that little girl. But because the mother was uncomfortable with what that represented and what that brought out and what she wasn't ready to to tackle on on her own and go through that level of healing and I think she didn't like me um even though I was so nice to her always and she took advantage and whatever um you know she she wasn't ready so unfortunately no judgment I wish her the best I I truly actually do because that little girl um is Mrs. Barama so much and I know that because she calls her all the time and she she wants to be with her but she can't so uh if this has happened to one of your kids um that's unfortunate because they're misunderstood um and they're working on it you know and my daughter works on it every day she always asks me and she checks in how did i do today you know when she's playing with other kids did i do a good job you know and it's not necessarily about doing a good job but she is the, the point is that she is aware and mindful that she is different but I don't shame her for it. I'm like, it's a beautiful thing that you're different, but we also want to be respectful and kind. And here's where my, my energy and my personality comes through to teach and guide her that you're not the only one and you are not the center of the universe, even though you think you are. And that's a beautiful thing that you do. But remember, there are other people around and we have to treat others how we would want to be treated, et cetera, et cetera. And their, their feelings are valid too. And we need to be kind. Uh, and sometimes your actions aren't kind, even though you don't realize it. So my job is to teach you that. And so she's learning. And the sad thing is she's come such a long way since this particular woman banished her from, from playing with her daughter. And I wish you could see her now because she's changed so much. But but nevertheless, whatever, they the contract that these two kids had with each other, perhaps that's all that 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 was it. And and now we move on. Who knows? Or maybe they'll find each other again later. I don't know. But they, uh, you know, just take one day at a time with the, if you have an, a daughter that you believe is in the Artemis group, you know, take one day at a time. Sometimes the best thing that you can do and the best advice I can give you when they're being fiery and unruly and uh, argumentative and just really giving you a hard time and they're just poking, 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 and you feel like you're going to explode the, what I've noticed that the best punishment, if there is such a thing that works for them, is they don't get any they don't get any attention from mom or the person that means the most to them. So when she's acting a certain way, I say I'm not going to participate in in this, um, and and I'm not I'm not going to talk to you right now. Uh, and I and I walk away, go out of my room, and I say I need to some time by myself, and I'll close my door. And it's like the worst thing that could happen to her um, for me to just walk away. It's like where's my, where's my lifeline? Where's the, you know, I need my mom. You're my whole world. And if you can't be around me, I, that's, that's worse than taking away phones and blocking from TV or going outside or whatever. Uh, that, that means more to her than anything else. So, um, she knows I mean business. If I say that I'm like, you know what, I can't even be around you right now. Uh, uh mommy needs a break. Um, and then we, but sometimes it's necessary because then she'll calm down. And then more importantly, I'm able to go and breathe and do the things that I do to ground and to help me relax so that when I come back out of my room or my space, I am in a different energy where I'm not, because they will, they will distort or, uh, sorry, I have allergies and 
my nose is like, I feel like I need to sneeze. Um, they will disrupt your chi so much that you don't even know what to do. Like it's, you're just like beyond yourself, you know, and you get so agitated, your heart rate goes up, your stomach hurts, you know? Oh, that's a good point. I'm going to say in a second. So sometimes we just need to separate, separate the two energies. They don't, they're not merging well together in this moment. So you go in your space. I'm going to go in my space and mommy needs a, a minute to uh, breathe and bring myself back to balance so that my chi is good. And I'm, okay. And then I can come back and I'm more patient. The thing about the Artemis group that I mentioned, they're less empathic, compassionate to others, but they are, but they don't realize that on a sub, sub subtle level, they take on the energy of everyone around us because they don't exhibit signs of compassion and empathy, but they are the most, um, they are selfless. They are givers. They will give all their toys to everyone else. Um, when you least expect it, because they, they, they want to give, they want to create something and, 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 and make people happy. You know, so my daughter will always say, oh, can I give this toy to her? She doesn't have it. And they feel like it, it livens her up, like in a way I've never seen. And I've noticed this with other girls that I work with that are in this group. They, they, they're givers. They want to give, they, they love the feeling of helping somebody else. Um, they're teachers. So a lot of them are going to be in the, the, the teacher group, you know, Aramis, she knew from the age of two that she wanted to be a teacher. So uh, that's where Aramis Creative Learning Center came from. And that's her legacy. She is going to be the future leader in the teaching educational dynamic of, of children and the trajectory of where we're headed in the future. That is her, that's her gift. That's her, that's her kind of focus. Um, but Right now, um, they're, they're, a big challenge that they're having is that they're so sensitive to the environment that they take on a lot of mom and dad and brother and sister and, and other children's energy, and they have a high anxiety. So many of them struggle with anxiety um, that is, that's just beyond um, like what's, what's kind of what you would think uh, is, is what's, well, what's normal, but what you normally or typically see. Uh, with children, the, the, it's it's even more with them. So they uh, oftentimes they get stomach aches. Uh, she gets stomach aches almost every single day of her life. Has nothing to do with food. It has nothing to do with anything other than she builds up this these thoughts, and she runs with it. And sometimes they can be negative, and then it manifests physically in the body, and she gets stomach aches like immediately, like it's. So if, if her, her dad and I are fighting, it's the end of the world for her because that she feels like her foundation is crumbling and it's an earthquake and she just can't stand. And then she gets so scared because she's like, oh my God, my, my, my two pillars of strength are fighting with each other. Um, and she can't have that. And a lot of, a lot of the Artemis group feel that way. Like if there's argument, argument, arguments going on in the home with mom and dad or siblings, or even mom is upset at another sibling and it, and it gets loud or the dogs are fighting or it's constant. Like, you know, they worry, did you lock the door? Uh, what if the dog gets out? Uh, what if a big storm comes through? Um, you know, they worry, worry, worry about things that are out of their control. And so the best thing we can do is teach them exactly that you, you have to try not to worry about things that are not in your control. You know, and mom and dad are fighting has nothing to do with you. We still love each other, but sometimes adults raise their voices at each other because they want to get their point across. And that can be scary for you uh, to, to witness something like that. So we just, we constantly have to explain and um, validate their worries as, uh, as, 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 as it's valid uh, and it's okay. Uh, but then we try to help them work through it and process it. And maybe they need to sing if they like to sing or they need to draw if they like to draw to channel those frustrations out, give them an, they need an outlet. They need something so that instead of a stomach ache, they can channel that energy out when we see the stress coming and, and we redirect them and say, okay, you know, let's, or let's go outside, let's go for a walk or let's go run, whatever they like to do, like whatever their thing is, however they get that in, they need an outlet. Otherwise it sits within them, it builds up, it amplifies, and then they get diarrhea, stomach aches, you know, a lot of digestive type stuff, but then others get headaches. You know, they also get headaches too. So it's, it's all about helping them manage and process their emotions. It's, it's, I don't have all the answers. Obviously my daughter is about to turn nine and that's the only experience I have is nine years plus uh, probably the 20 to 30 clients that I have that are within the Artemis group that I've worked with their families and those girls. 
And the adults that I know that are, that don't know, but I know, they don't know that I know that they, <laughs> um, and I kind of see how they, how they act as adults. And I take all of that in and I process it. And then I get my own um, knowing through my higher self. And then I, I formulate these, these thoughts and these ideas. And that's where I am right now. And that's how I coach. And I see what works and what doesn't work. So it, this is by all means, not a, a full video of everything because I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to say, oh my God, I should have said 10 more things. Um, but at least this gets the conversation going. This helps those parents right now that um, are watching this for the first time. And they're like, oh my God, yes, that's my daughter. Someone gets, someone gets me or her. And then it, this helps you kind of shift your thoughts and, and your parenting style, or at least helps you look at her in a different way um, and maybe understand her struggles a little bit more and help you work through, okay, now that I know she's not trying to be difficult and I understand the why, how can I parent her different? How can I react differently? And it's going to be different for every house. So not everybody, uh, not, not everything, <clears throat> not everything works for all of them the same way. So you have to figure out like my, all my techniques of breathing um, and all the things that I do, ground, hold this crystal, you know, all the things that I do to calm myself down, I give to Aramis and she's just like, let's throw the crystal across the room. She's like, my breathing isn't working, you know? And I, so I'm like, well, I, the old, uh, old me before I knew better, I'd get frustrated. I'm like, you're not doing it right. You're not trying. But now I'm like, all right, I already know that's not going to work. So, Hey, let's go outside. How about we sing? Why don't we scream? Why don't we dance? like, like, you know, and get movement. And, and I know the things that are going to work for her. Uh, also love. I'm, all I say is I love you. So sometimes I just look at her and I say, when she's in her moment of screaming and I just say, I love you so much, Aramis. And I just hug her and I say, can mommy just, can we just hug for a moment? And I can just feel the bomb diffusing. So you have to figure out what works for your child. And sometimes nothing works and I just leave. I gotta go. I'm like, all right, I gotta we'll go away from you right now. And so not everything's going to work all the time. So you got to just figure out what works in your family. The last quick tidbit I'm going to say um, is that the fact that a lot of these um, Artemis girls, and this goes for just a star season in general, I'm seeing more and more. They know how they're going to struggle as a young child. They say, I'm going to bypass that. And there are a lot of reverse walk-ins as uh, which I did a video on walk-ins and reverse walk-ins a few weeks ago. So you could check out more information on that. But basically really quickly, what it means is they have a angelic being or a soul that they know that is more used to this density and being in this body, like a crystal type of energy will, will take over their vessel. They're still there the whole time. They're just not in the body. They're kind of just merging slowly and, and seeing how things go. Um, and they'll have that walk-in that starts in that reverse walk-in that will be in that body for a determined period of time. And then whenever they feel ready, they'll come in, that soul will leave and then their soul will come through. So it's a reverse walk-in because the soul that's me meant to be in the body the whole time comes in second, as opposed to the typical walk-in where the soul that's been in the body for X amount of time says, I can't do it anymore. Please somebody come in or I'm gonna you know, commit suicide or whatever. Um, and then another soul walks in and then takes over that person's life. This is different. The soul never, the, the intended soul doesn't walk in on purpose initially so that another um, placeholder can come through and be in that body as it grows and goes through those developmental stages that this other soul doesn't wanna deal with because they know they would struggle. Um, and the other soul does just fine and they're there the whole time. So they take on all the memories, everything's the same. Um, and then when it, they're ready, that soul will leave the body because they're done with that, with what they said they would do, what they volunteered for. And then the, the Artemis soul will come through and then they'll take it from there. Generally, you're going to know because they're going to have an extreme personality change. Um, and you're going to say, holy moly, what happened to my child? Where did she go? She was so chill and beautiful and calm and peaceful. And then one day, like what happened to her? She's, you know, uh, you know, aggressive, challenging, all the things that I just said um, before. So, you know, that, that could have happened to you. If you're watching this, if you feel like that happened and your daughter had a very different personality change after a tonsillectomy or a medical procedure or a near death experience or car accident or anything, 
anything. It doesn't have to be an extreme. It could be even they go to sleep one night and they wake up different and then they're never the same again. So it's that and everything in between. There's there's no one way that they that they they swap. So that could be you. Now, do you need to contact me and have a session to confirm? No, you don't need to. Just if you know, then you know. And, and, and then you're like, aha, oh, that makes sense. Sometimes it's just that you need to understand what happened. And now it makes sense. And then you move on accordingly. So, um, of course, you can have a session. I'm, say, I'm not saying you can, but I don't want people to feel like they need to, they have to have me tell them when I think majority of you guys already know. Now I can help with other things on how to coach you through certain challenges and things. Um, but you know, this is a community that we're trying to build. So if you have a, a daughter that you feel is a part of the group, leave a comment in the chat and we can, and we'll start a community. Now I did back in the late winter, early spring of this year, I started an Artemis group, a uh, support group. I will do that again. I just, it was summer. We took a break. And also I was really busy getting the book uh, done towards the end of, of uh, uh, early summer, end of spring, early summer. So I wasn't doing much at all. Um, but I want to bring that back on again soon. So we can have a support group that we all parents can come together and we can talk about the challenges and not because I'm going to have all the answers, but because so that we can help each other and come up with ideas and strategize. And of course, Artemis, older children or adults, that believe that they are in that group can also join. It's not just about children. It's how can we collectively support each other if we know that we're in this group or we know someone in our intimate circle or family that's in this group and you wanna know how to support them as well. So I will bring that back probably October um, and and we'll go from there and we'll learn more. And there's so much to these, to, to these beautiful beings, but they are of the light. They are powerful. Uh, they are attacked. Um, quite often through the astral, through nightmares, um, because they are so, their light is so bright. They come in like comets that they um, are immediately um, targeted by the dark beings because they don't, they know how powerful they are and they know they're the future leaders of the world. So they're going to mess with them. So we have to protect them through intention, teach them to not consent to 3D interference until they're able to do that. You as their, as their guardian and protector, you know, say I do not consent to three any 3D interference um, or any experiences, energies, entities, or anything that is not in alignment with Aramis's highest good or whatever your child's name is. And so it is in all dimensions, time and space. You just keep reiterating it. You can put I put crystals all over her room. She has a salt lamp in there. I do biofeedback sessions on her all the time to clear. Her. I have energy. Um, healers that I know that do clearings on her. I mean, so it's it's a lot of different things that I do, um, but it's constant. It's constant protection because they are attacked, especially through nightmares. So if you're if your daughter that I, that uh, aligns with what I just said complains um, about nightmares or has night terrors, and it's a real issue in your home, believe her uh, because it happens. Um, I know it happens uh, very commonly. And they are, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. And this is true for a lot of star seeds in my, I talked about that in my nightmares and shadow beings video. And I also talked about it in the book. It's not just Artemis. It's all the star seeds are targeted, uh, but I feel like she's targeted more than my boys ever were and have ever been. So it's, it's really, it's very clear that she's the target. So um, practice spiritual hygiene with them, ground them. Um, as, as any way you can in the ocean and the lakes, the rivers, in nature, the forests, um, fresh air, uh, whatever you can do, camping, whatever they're open to, um, try to get them grounded as much as possible. The salt baths, my daughter loves baths. So I'll put um, a bunch of Himalayan salt in the bath water with her. That helps just um, balance her energy uh, and her uh, clear the auric field. Um, so that helps a lot as well. Whatever ideas you have to put them in the, in the notes. I know I didn't say everything is not possible. Um, but at least I said, I think enough today that, um, people will uh, be able to kind of figure out, okay, I'm in this group or I'm not. And, and then we can go from there. We support each other. So I hope this video was helpful for all of you today. I've got a lot more to come. The next one I'm going to be working on, um, 
This week is fear and shame. That's a big one that's coming up and it's really important. So that'll be the next topic of conversation. I also did a, a Q&A the other night that I think was a lot of fun and, and we did we we did we got through a lot of great questions. So I think I'm going to answer that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to do another one of those in a few weeks. Uh, so we have a lot of cool stuff to come. If you've purchased my book, Star Seeds and the Great Awakening, uh, and you feel like you resonate with it and, and you're getting valuable information, please uh, comment, let me know, but also please leave a review on Amazon. Um, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to have any sessions with me um, or any starseed coachings or ancestral healing or anything, <clears throat> you can visit my website at sherrydivban.com. I'm also on Instagram. So until next time, I hope that this video uh, is finds all of you well, and I hope it's uplifting and I continue to bring information in a way that is valuable um, but also empowering. So I hope that I did that for you, <clears throat> for you all today. So until next time, bye everybody.